you should never watch romance anime if you're a guy. Now look, I've watched a couple anime, right? I grew up watching Dragon Ball Z, my favorite one to Yu Hakusho, and recently I watched Baki. It's nice, right? Some of us use it for gym motivation, some of us buy anime clothes that look nice, whatever, right? Like anime is cool, it's, it's a cool media form. But one of the traps that I see a lot of young men fall into is watching romance anime. This might be one of the worst things you can possibly consume because it turns you into a degenerate loser. So this might be one of the worst takes I've ever heard. Bro did not cook. This is burnt toast. The stove's on fire. Everything's destroyed. We need to order out tonight. Saying that rom-com anime makes you a degenerate loser is more brain dead than watching an XQC Aiden Ross debate about geography. Bro, you know, you know the whole globe is already like... Well, I believe the Earth's flat. Now, I know this is an opinion, but let me spit some facts real quick. Opinions can be wrong, and it's okay to criticize someone when they have a bad take, especially when it's based in ignorance and fragile ego. If you're watching One Punch Man or Dragon Ball Z, you have these main characters like Goku or Saitama who are like go-getters, they try hard, they always push themselves. But in these romance anime, the main characters tend to be absolute losers, and then for some reason the writers make it so where the super hot girl who's top of the class or like the best person you could possibly ever be falls for this loser and like becomes enthralled with their quirky little traits first up i'm gonna prop up love is war which runs counter to your entire argument so here we go in love is war miyuki and kaguya are technically both the protagonists and in the story miyuki is low-key a chad everybody loves him and he's the top of the class kaguya is awesome and an exceptionally well-written character chika is chika which says a lot about her and yu ishigami is the best character because he's the degenerate loser we can all relate to and the overall plot fixates on the mind games and the mental gymnastics surrounding love where miyuki and kaguya are psychologically manipulating the other into confessing it's a fantastic concept, realistic and grounded, because, shocker, love is a battleground. That's why there's the saying that all is fair in love and war, because technically, there aren't any rules at play. And that's what the anime tackles behind the comedy. Well, when they're not talking about Discord, Apex Legends, or the fact that Miyuki's father ends up becoming a streamer. Now, if this lad actually had some valid points, other than coming up with stuff with the intellectual capacity of toilet paper, I probably would have let this slide. But our local philosopher doesn't even understand the content that he's glazing. Bro said Saitama is a go-getter. These main characters like Goku or Saitama who are like go-getters. Go-getters. <laughs> Saitama is chronically depressed. He's so mentally in the gutter that even though he's the strongest hero, he isn't the best hero. Do you know what Saitama's development in One Punch Man is? It's getting friends. Becoming a well-rounded person with things worth protecting that inevitably make him a better hero. Saitama's tragedy is that even though he made it to the top of his respective field, he still wasn't happy. Despite his immeasurable strength, he was a hollow person, suffering and going through the motions. The message of One Punch Man actually opposes the point you're trying to make. That being this insane go-getter means nothing if you don't have attachments beyond the surface level bull. Then you see guys compare real life relationships to anime relationships and be like, oh, I wish I could find a girl like the one in this anime who has no expectations of a guy and will date a loser. Why can't that happen to me? But also she has to be super hot with double Ds and a one inch waist because that's how the girls are drawn in anime. What are you doing? Now look, the last statement you just said is a blanket that you can cast over anyone and everyone. There's a fine line between reality and fiction. And if you're vulnerable enough to get swamped by your own delusion, then he got bigger fish to fry than watching rom-com anime. I don't care who you are and how uncorruptible you think your mind is. If you're a young man and you're constantly consuming these types of media and these types of stories, you're going to become influenced. You're going to start to think that this is how life really is or how it should be. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Now, with that being said, I understand the point he was trying to make, though he explained it poorly. Yes, there's an issue with the whole waifu romanticization. Well, let's keep it a buck. I could apply that same idea to power scalers and riding Goku. But since it's obvious that you've never watched any romance anime other than Rent a Girlfriend, I'll let you in on some peek. Oregaru, Hachiman is the Batman of romance. He's exceptionally kind and cruel, except it's usually at the detriment of his self. For movies, I recommend Silent Voice and Your Name, and that should be good enough to get you down the rabbit hole. Golden Time. Honestly, this is one of my favorites, and that's because it's adult romance, and it's one of the few times a memory loss trope actually works. <laughs> Nana. Now, this is a romance anime where everyone's in a relationship, but no one's happy. It's really good, but also very depressing because it surrounds this topic of toxic love, but it also incorporates this whole music industry type thing, which I thought was pretty unique. Hog and I. I'll just put this clip here. Hey, quit fat.
clan ad, the anime that made me want to start a family, and it's also very depressing. Masamune Kun's revenge. Bro is just a Chad, and his whole goal is to make this girl fall in love with him, and then he's gonna dump her. Romantic Killer, a reverse harem where the girl's life basically becomes a dating sim, and it's really fun. Tomo chan, Tony Kawa, and the angel next door spoils me rotten. These are just very wholesome. And lastly, the creme de la creme, the best romance anime to ever exist. Interspecies reviewers. Yes, 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 yes. Now, more seriously, the reason why everyone loves romance anime is because love is a relevant subject. Many great characters arise from these stories, and as people, we can learn from their mistakes and make better decisions moving forward. And just like you watch the classic battle shonens for motivation, so do those with rom coms. And bashing people for the things they enjoy just shows that you're not secure with the things that you like, which is admittedly pretty funny.